Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be rendering our world in a more better way. And what I mean by better way is that we'll be able to set a tile to exactly what we want it with our world. Granted, I only have one tile, but you on the other hand may have many other tiles that you would want to render in your world. So we can start this by creating our world class. This is going to house our array of tiles. And so we'll have a private byte array. And this will be tiles. Now we're using a byte array because it's going to be the ID of the tile and that is how our tile renderer will render the tiles. We'll also hold in an int for the width of the world and an int for the height of the world. So in our constructor, I'm just going to set the width right now to something more suitable like 16 and the height will be 16 as well. And we'll create a new byte array of the tiles of width times height. So right now, all of our tiles will be set to zero. This is going to be our first tile. It's going to be our test tile, since that's the zero tile. And when we create a new array, we're creating our array, and it's also setting all the values to zero. And that should be it for the constructor. Now let's get on with a render method. And this is going to take our tile renderer to render all of, all of our tiles. So I'm going to have two for loops and I is going to be less than height I plus plus and then J is going to be less than width. And here we'll do our render dot render tile and the byte ID is what our array will have. So the equation we're going to be using is J plus I times width. So basically, because J is going for our width of the array, we're going to be using this and then our height. So if we had to access three and four, basically our X, which is three, will be completely fine. But for our Y of four, we're gonna multiply this with the width. So that way we can get onto the correct line of which we are trying to access. Okay, so now for the x variable. This is just going to be j. And y is going to be negative i. Now for the shader, We could create a shader for the world, and you can do that if you wish. But I'm just going to pass in a shader into our render method here. And the world matrix, I'll get onto this last. And for the camera, we're going to pass in a camera with our render method. Okay, now back onto the matrix. The matrix is, of course, our world's transformation, 
which is labeled as world. So I'm going to create a private matrix for F, and I'll call this world. And we'll initialize world as a new matrix for F, and we'll set the translation to a new vector 3f of just 0. Now, this will put the top left corner of our world in the exact center of our screen. And now we're going to have to scale our world. So, we'll do world.scale and I'm going to have each tile 32 by 32 and we can achieve this by using 16 and much like last tutorial the reason why in the tile renderer we use x times 2 is because of the way our model is our model has its origin in the center of the box so if we had a set size for it, it'll scale on one side and then it'll scale on the other side. Now I showed an image last video on the tile renderer showing you how the model was set up and how the scaling works. So yeah, and back onto the world, 16 will make our tiles 32 by 32. Okay, so now that we have our scale set, we can finally go into the main and create our world. So, I'm going to get rid of the matrix I have, both the matrix. I'm not going to be using those. And I'm going to replace them with a world. I'll call this world and it'll equal to a new world. And so down where we render our world, I'm going to get rid of the for, the double for loop here, and we'll use world.render. And here we'll put our tile renderer, which for some reason is named tiles, our shader and our camera and so now when we render we should have our tiles and they are not in the center of the screen well the top left isn't anyways hmm that's weird Anyways, all that matters is that our world is now rendering. So, wouldn't it be nice if we could just roam around our world and just take a look at all the tiles? Well, yes, that would be nice. So, where we have our input above our window update, I am going to have a couple of if statements. So we're going to test with the input. Oh, not dot equals. And we're going to test if key, if the key is down, and we'll use glfw key. Let's go with A. Import that, and if it's down, and it's going to run this line of code, and we're going to translate our camera. So camera get position. I believe there's a yes, there is, and we'll set this to camera. Oh wait, never mind. That's, I forgot that's how this library works. We can just do dot sub. 
with a new vector 3f. And we'll go with minus 10. No, minus 1. We'll go with minus 1. 0 and 0. So now when we run, if we press A, we're moving the camera left. So that's good. We can go ahead and copy, paste this. Make sure it's GLFW key D, that's pressing it, and make this value positive. I'm going to copy and paste both of them. Change it to W and S. Make both the X is zero. And then for if key W is down, we'll use one on the Y. And if S is down, we'll use negative one on the Y. And so now we can move around our world. Now this is quite slow, so let's go ahead and increase the value to increase the values to five. Now we should roam around the world a little faster. Okay, I hope you enjoyed and try to see if you can create a method that'll change the tiles. So what I mean by this is that if you call this method, you can set a tile to like the ID of five at this at a specific coordinate within this array list. And I will see you in the next video.